I'm Ian Mitroff. I'm a professor of management. My area of specialty is crisis management. And crisis management is not the same as risk management. They share a number of things in common, but they're very different. Risk management primarily uh, calculates and looks at the probabilities of certain uh, crises or disasters, and then it looks also at the consequences. It multiplies the two together so you come up with a single number. Crisis management doesn't do that. And the reason why it doesn't do it, it looks at different categories and families of crises because the tendency is if you come up with a single number, you'll have a cutoff point. You'll look at crises or disasters that exceed some cutoff point. You won't look at the ones below. For example, 9-11 uh, was a low probability, high consequence event. And risk management could uh, neglect that. Crisis management would not. It looks at different categories and kinds of crises from economic, informational, infrastructure, health, PR, and the like. And then crisis management goes to the next step. It shows how they're all connected. There's no such thing as a crisis that's a single crisis. Each crisis is either part of a wider net or it sets off a chain reaction of other crises. So if you're only prepared for one kind, say fires, explosions, whatever, you're really not prepared. So crisis management is thinking about the unthinkable, as many unthinkables as you can, connecting them up. It doesn't matter, and it's not about plans that sit on the shelf. It's about building actual capabilities that you enact during the heat of a crisis. So before a crisis happens, you take a hard look at your vulnerabilities and strengths, and you develop capabilities. When the crisis occurs, then you have to enact the capabilities. If you don't have it, and it's like Gulf uh, oil in the uh, BP in the in the Gulf, where because they uh, didn't have good damage containment, and just reacting was not a good good enough. So you know millions of gallons, uh, you know, escaped, and they had to go back literally invent the damage containment. You know the crisis became worse. Um, another part of crisis management, also very critical, is after a crisis has happened, and the ideal there is no fault. Uh, learning, yeah, not the blame game. If people are culpable, of course, there will be criminal proceedings. But the main objective is to say, what do we do wrong? What do we do not so good? And how can we prepare and become better prepared next time? Now, the, uh, the keeper in all of this is that those organizations that are proactive, which means they prepare for more crises than they experience versus reactive, experience more, organization, uh, more crises than they prepare for. Proactive organizations are more profitable, experience fewer crises. They link what they learn about crisis management into uh, total quality management, into quality assurance. And, and in short, it's not a, crisis management is not only the right thing to do, but it's good for business. So they're substantially more profitable. They have a different culture. Uh, and the culture is that you can always work to make things better, not only uh, to prevent crises, but to improve products. So if it ain't broke, don't break it is not the motto in crisis management. It is anticipate what could break and help to make it better before it does.